So that's the second one. So we will do, um, let's open the next. And the next one, I'm just going to show you the final and explain it. It's kind of the same thing, but just so you understand it. So if we look at this scene, let me just maximize this viewport right here so you can see it. If we look at this scene, this is basically for a lamp. And the way to kind of show you how this is built is I'll open up Light Lister. And let's put Light Lister over here because that's all we need. Now if we turn everything up. Okay, so key up. Okay, that's the one that shines up. So that's like what we do with the torch. Ceiling bounce comes down. And then in order to adjust some of the elements, we can um, tweak it. You'll see there's some other items. So that's up. And ceiling bounce. And if we go down, that's the top surface. Now under the table, we want to add a little bit of light. So you can see this is simulating the light going down. And um, also there's a specular highlight that's added on the lamp, which you'll see when you render it out. So this is basically the similar idea. You got light going up, light coming down, it's bouncing off of this surface, bouncing off the top. But it's the same setup, just a little bit more complicated. The um, other thing to be aware of is you don't have to use necessarily two key lights. You can just put an Omni there as well. So people have different um, options. And if for some reason you want a semi-transparent shade, you put the Omni in the middle and you have, actually let me just create an Omni. It's probably going to be easier to show it. So let's create one more Omni and put it in the middle. Let's see where it is. It's right there. Okay, and now that's inside the lampshade. Now, in order to be able to adjust it, I'm just doing an undo so I can grab it. There we go. So this is basically a shade light. So let me give this a tint, and this is a technique I recommend using a lot so you can see what's doing what. And you just go back so you can see right now that's illuminating everything, and it's ignoring the inside of the shade. Now if I put on the inverse decay and I crank up the multiplier, you can see how this is kind of illuminating this area and it's a way to kind of create the illusion that the shade is semi-transparent. So let me do, it might be easier just to turn off the other lights so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so that would be simulating the light coming off the shade and then you'd overlay that with the light down and the light up. And you can see even with these, let's refresh, even just with these three lights, it's starting to look pretty realistic. So the other ones, fills, they might be a little extreme, but kind of gets the idea across. Okay, so the final thing, uh, and basically just to let you know what the assignment, you have to do one rendering that's an indoor light source, so basically a lamp, something on the ceiling, and then you have to do one that's an outdoor. Now, I showed you the golf ball technique, but that doesn't help, so the final demo I'm going to show you is light coming in from outside. So let's go demo four. Now that's the final. So let's open the non-final. Demo four, here we go. Now this is pretty simple. At this point this is just a box inside a room, but we're going to bring the light in here, have it bounce on the floor, go up in the ceiling, bounce off the ceiling, come back down. So before we do anything else, uh, let's get the environment color and the light blue. Now just to be aware, the brighter it is outside, the brighter you can make the room. If you have this dark outside and you have the inside brighter, it's not going to make sense because remember, outside is going to be brighter, the light is going to come in every time it bounces, it's going to get darker. Render this out. Okay, so now we have our light outside. Now we want to get the light source coming in. Uh, there's, you could try to use an Omni if you wanted, that's fine. Um, I just, for the sake, I just want to show you another light. There's a light called a directional light. And the directional light basically shoots light rays the infinite that are almost parallel. And the reason why you do this is think about drawing um, two light rays from the sun to the earth. Even though there's a slight, slight, slight angle, for all intents and purposes, they're running parallel. So some people call this a daylight or a sunlight as well. So we're going to use the, this, and also we're going to use it as the targeted version. And what we can do with this is you can see there's the target. And I'm going to take the target, and I'm going to keep that on the floor. 
And if for some reason you want to get rid of the target, if you select the main light, there's always an option for toggling on and off the target. Um, it kind of depends on what you want to do. If you have a drive-by with a car um, coming through a scene, then having something. Okay, so now we have that, and let's render this out, and let's go back to perspective, lock that, render, and now you can see we got the light coming in. You can see it's blue tint because that's what we had before the last setting. So I want to come in and change the intensity to white, and hit OK, and now let's render this out again. And now you can see I get this shape. Now the problem with this shape, it's a circle, it should be a square. So even if I turn shadows on with this and go to render it, I'm still not getting that. And that's because if I go outside of the scene, let me save this using a camera real quick. Uh, create camera, uh, camera from view. And actually we can just switch this and do lights, directional light, and I'll change the view. And let's just go to shaded. Um, actually, let's just go back to perspective. I think it's going to be easier. Um, okay, so if we go out, here's the light, here's the camera, and you'll notice that if I'm the light, I don't see anything. And that's because this surface is facing, the normals are facing inward, not outward. So we need to copy this face, and the easiest way is we can just do edit, uh, clone, create a copy, or duplicate if you want, uh, window wall, reversed. Hit OK, and now we'll grab that one and just hit the element, which automatically selects the whole thing. And we flip the normals. And now if I go to render this from the scene, now you see I'm starting to get the box. Now it's around here, and that's because the light is smaller than the window. So I can come in and do a scale, and if I do a scale local, it'll enable me to adjust it without skewing it too much. And then let's go and pull this up. And let's render it again. And I want to show you another thing. So we got this. Now, if you see this light up here and light up here, what that's caused by is this is caused by the light coming through the ceiling. So if you have a ceiling as well, you need to do it. And there's ways that you can do materials to make it double-sided. But I'm going to have to shrink this down, render it out again, shrink it down a little bit more, render it out. And now you can see we have pretty well the, the, the shape that we want. So let's go back to the camera, and uh, let's move the camera back just a smidge. And you can see this camera has a target as well. Okay, so we got that. So the next thing we want to do is we want to come down, after we hit the floor, we want the light to go up. So we want to add a bounce light. So we'll create an Omni and we want to put it exactly under where the light's hitting. Um, let's just back to perspective. And let's pull up realistic and see if we actually see it. Okay, there we go. So we want to get this Omni exactly under, and you can see how it's illuminating the rest of the space. So you can tweak this, move it around. Generally the light source is going to be in the middle where this hits. And I want to keep this below the floor. And this is pretty bright at this point. So let's see what the settings are. I can knock this down to uh, 0.75. And remember, the highlight, whatever this is, has to be brighter than that. If not, it'll be contradictory. So the, remember, each time you bounce, it's a little less. So this is a uh, 4 bounce. And we don't want any shadow. Uh, we want to add a decay to it. Inverse square. Increase it a little. And now if we render this out, you can see, okay, the light's coming in, it's bouncing off, and it's coming up. Um, if I want it to be brighter, I could obviously do this more and increase the intensity because I do have the decay on. Um, and I don't want this to get too bright because you see it's brighter than here. And if I do that, then I need to come back to the directional light and crank up its multiplier. And now let's render this out. And you see that this is getting brighter than that. So you just got to tweak the two and adjust it and just kind of optically figure out what you want to do. Um, and like I said, if you go in and you do the environment and you make the environment too dark, then it looks really weird because you have this bright light source, but it's dark outside. So the environment needs to be the brightest, 
the light the second brightest, followed by the bounce light. And then we need one more bounce light to fill this out. So we'll just grab this one, copy, hold down shift key, pull it up above the ceiling, and this is ceiling bounce. Now if we render this now we have it equally illuminating both surfaces. So we do what we did before. Go on into uh, grab the floor and send that over and include and it's not going to illuminate anything else. And now we render it, it only lights up the floor. So let's look at that just real quick with the light lister just to see what's happening. So we have a directional light that comes in and then we have a floor bounce and then we have a light that comes down from the ceiling and actually when we render this out it only illuminates the floor. And that's the setup number uh, four. So the assignment is basically to do the two lighting and see what you can do. Uh, and that's it.